Okay, my friends, this is going to be fabulously fun. Nothing doesn't exist. There's quantum foam everywhere. Quantum foam is everywhere. And I know this because I was engaged with Don Lincoln here long ago, and he found these particles in their super collider, and I found them in our light research. And in the meantime, he talks about these quantum foam particles blinking on and off, and empty space isn't empty. It's a writhing, dizzying display of change out in the universe. It's all these, they turn on and off. I can actually show you that happening. And here, it's been observed and it's been spoken about by John Glenn. Now, before we go to John Glenn, listen to what they have to say. The quantum foam exists. It's real. You combine this with the uncertainty principle and Einstein's famous equation, all of that stuff I don't care about. What I care about is these particles flashing on and then turning off, flashing on and then turning off. The concept of nothing has been debated for thousands of years by both scientists and philosophers. Even if you took an empty container devoid of all matter and cooled it to absolute zero, there is still something in the container. That something is called quantum foam, and it represents particles blinking into and out of existence. Why would they blink into existence and out of existence? Why? Somebody turn the lights on and turn the lights off. Turn the lights on and turn the lights off. What does that mean? That means energy. No energy. Energy. No energy. Energy. No energy, energy, no energy, 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 energy. That's what happens, blinking on and off. How far apart are these particles? Well, guess what? This has already been determined. Listen to this. All right, I put this up a couple of years ago. John Glenn's fireflies are the ether. Now, this is John Glenn describing what he's seeing as he's the, f the first one really to go in orbit, first American. All right, so we're going to figure out why John Glenn is seeing these little particles, these little fireflies. Fireflies flicker on and off. Now, he's on, just like we are in, in the Earth, is on one of the arms of the Milky Way. Our solar system is. So it's concussing with whatever's in front of us, and anytime something concusses, it turns white. That goes for little particles, too, which is the quantum foam, which Don Lincoln says is turning on and off at dizzying speeds, flickering on and off the quantum foam. Well, that's because light is colliding with other particles of light, and that, or dust particles, both. Here's what Don Lincoln saw. I think I said that here's what Don Lincoln saw. It's John, Don, John Glenn saw this, 1962, I believe it was. And he saw these little particles flashing on and off as he was coming into the sunlight, and if he looked behind him as he was coming out of the sunlight. And that's because the sun was literally blocked from the light hitting the earth. So here's what he was seeing. He's coming around this way, looking into space this way. The light from the sun, has a, he's looking out here, and the light around him is being lit up. But he's still in the shadow of the earth. Now, when he came around the earth and went this way, he looked back, and the same thing happened here. He could see the particles being all lit up behind him. Listen to what he has to say. That's what happened. He could see out in front and all the particles are flickering on and off and just going by him very slowly. He says how far apart they are. This was known 50 years ago. Well, 60 years ago. All right, so listen to what he has to say. This is Space Link TV. This goes back five years ago. Now listen to what he has to say. I may stop it from here and there. Uh, they probably average maybe 
seven or eight feet apart. Do you hear that? Seven or eight feet apart. That's their magnetic field. You stay away from me, I'll stay away from you. Seven or eight feet apart, they're happy in their own... That was very... That's pretty specific what he said. Seven or eight feet apart, brilliantly lighted, because they're in the the sunlight and he's just coming into the sunlight. He's still in the dark so he can see this. The same effect happens on a solar eclipse. Let me show you that. On a solar eclipse you get basically the same effect. You see this? We're in the darkness. We can see all these particles. He's seeing all those particles lit up going around the earth as he's coming out from the darkness of the earth into the light. Of course, this is the sun, so we're really seeing something. He's seeing them just sort of floating around. All right, let's get back to John Glenn. All right, oh, don't forget now, here's my contention. As he's coming around here, he's still in the darkness, and he can see them being lit up, and he's sort of plowing through them, and they're just sort of going with them. When he turned around and looked backwards from here, he could see the same effect. He's looking into the darkness. Now, listen to what he has to say. Uh, they swirl around the capsule and go in front of the window, and they're all brilliantly lighted. Uh, they probably average maybe uh, seven or eight feet apart, but I can see them all down below me also. Now, I want to m mention something. He's going to lose contact with the Earth because he's amongst tons of charged particles because he's in a zone that's scrubbing the other particles in space and because of that scrub, they're, they're just a lot of, of... Roger. Yeah. Okay, so don't forget, as he's coming around the outside of the Earth, he's looking into darkness. And he's seeing the particles light up in front of him. And then when he looks back, he's seeing the particles light up behind him. But he's got to be in the darkness. Now listen to what he has to say. They lit up like they're luminescent. I never saw anything like it. They're around the little... They're appearing by the capsule. Now let me just mention a couple things quickly before he continues. He's going to be going into where all of these little charged particles are. That's where they are. When he hits that zone, the ionosphere zone-ish area, he's going to be in the midst of them, and he's not going to be able to communicate to the to ground control. He's going to be going, and that's all you'll be able to hear. And he'll say, is anybody listening? Is anybody, can anybody hear me? But he's going to continue to broadcast. They cannot hear him. Now, and that's because he's amongst all these charged particles that are interfering with his signal. Now, here's what he's doing. He's saying that he's coming through all these little tiny particles and they're swirling around a capsule, brilliantly lit up. Now, listen to what he says. He's still in the darkness, though. Don't forget. Uh, and they look like little stars. A whole shower of them coming by. Uh, they swirl around the capsule and go in front of the window and they're all brilliantly lighted. Uh, they probably average maybe... Uh, seven or eight feet apart. Now listen to that. That is critically important. That means that these magnetic fields are keeping them separated by a certain distance. He's saying seven to eight feet apart. That's pretty specific. It's not like they're just all, all randomly here and there. He's saying they're seven or eight feet apart. That's pretty specific to me. But I can see them all down below me also. They're everywhere. They can't hear him. He's in the middle of all these charged particles. There are literally thousands of them. Uh, this is Friendship 7. Uh, am I in contact with anyone? Over. Uh, 
Well, this has been going on since about one uh, plus one five. Over. Just after I remarked about the sunset, I looked. You see, just after we remarked about the sunset, he's got to be in the dark, looking out into the into the darkness of space, and then those particles become very brilliant. Back up and looked out the window, and uh, all of those swirl of particles was going by. Over. Uh, this is Friendship 7 uh, broadcasting in the blind. The sunrise uh, has come up behind sunrise. the telescope. It was brilliant in the scope, a brilliant red as it approached the horizon and came up. And just as, the, as I looked back up out the window, I had uh, literally thousands of small luminous particles. Uh, you hear what he said? Let's uh, make sure you understand this because he is when he is looking back, Let's listen to what he says. He was approaching the rise and came up, and just as he... As I looked back up out the window, he looked I back. had uh, literally thousands of small luminous particles uh, swirling around the capsule and going away from me at maybe uh, three to five miles per hour. Uh, now that I am out in the bright sun, uh, they seem to... Now he's out in the bright sun, they're gone. Let's make sure you understand this. He had literally thousands of them come by him as he was in the darkness. Particles uh, swirling around the capsule and going away from me at maybe uh, three to five miles per hour. Uh, now that I am out in the bright sun, uh, they seem to have disappeared. Uh, it was just as the sun was coming up. I can sure. still see just a few of them now, even though the sun is up some uh, 20 degrees above the all right, he's still seeing some of them now. Those must be huge particles. They must be like big, big dust particles. Horizon. Uh, I still have some of these little particles coming around the capsule occasionally here. I can see them against the dark sky even on the daytime. Over. There it is right there, against the dark sky. Against the dark sky. Roger. Now they're back in contact. That's the key. You can see them against the dark sky. So they're being illuminated. Now, if they're a sixteenth of an inch or smaller, that's still pretty big to be floating around in space. That's not like the size of gas particles. Uh, just as at, just at sunrise, there just were literally see? thousands of them. It looked like... See, just at sunrise. As soon as he's in the real dark and he's looking out into the real bright, there's thousands of them. When he gets himself into the bright-ish area, he can only see the biggest of them. That's just exactly what he's saying. Just a myriad of stars, over. Roger, are they uh, losing value or floating with you? Uh, some of them uh, float almost with me. Most of them appear to be moving at about three to five miles an hour away from me. I'm going just a little faster than they are, over. Uh, only really unusual thing so far beside ASCS trouble. Uh, All right, that's enough. This is what what he reported, and that, my friends, is the ether, the aether, however you want to pronounce it, that Plato talked about, and it permeates space. That means that all the light that's coming through space has to bounce off of these particles, and when it does, it slows the light down. It's not necessary that we're expanding our universe so fast that light now is just rocket shipping out. No, the light is slowing down. That's why it's shifting red. And it's going into the cosmic microwave radiation background because it's so slow. Those are the infrared rays that just sort of they bounce around very slowly, but enough to make a background of cosmic back microwave radiation so they can see it as like a just a sort of a hum in the background and they think that's left over from the big bang it's not it's just light slowing down that's all it is 
And the same thing with the red shifted stuff. We have no, you know, we're going through the arm of the Milky Way. All right, now let's make sure that you understand this. These are the particles coming off the sun. It's the same thing that he was seeing only as he was coming around the earth. We're having to go through all of the stuff that's in front of us. So we're pushing through that. So every light particle has to push through all of that stuff, which is the quantum foam that Don Lincoln talks about and Fermi Lab talks about. And we are scrubbing, just like John Glenn was, scrubbing against the interface between our atmosphere and all the particles around here, because it's saturated as well. They just always say, oh, it's a vacuum, it's a vacuum. It's not a vacuum. And I, I, I know they know this, because they're, t they're talking about how dense it is and how they can figure out ways to see through all this dust and all this radiation that's out there in the way of their light particles. Well... And then they say, well, the light coming to us is coming through nothing. No, it's obviously coming through other particles. You know, this is the kind of stuff that I find interesting. They get 10,000 hits in 36 minutes. Are space and time real? Of course they're real. What do you think is out there? There's space out there. There's no question there's space out there. Time ticks on. Time is not something you can stretch out just because they think light is accelerating. Light can accelerate, who cares? It doesn't mean you grow older quicker or grow less old. That's all just nonsense. You are where you are when you are there. And for you, your time just ticks on. Same thing for a tree. Same thing for a frog. It's just a continuous process of change. That's what time is. A continuous process of change. Space is just the vastness of whatever we, is out there. I don't know what's out there. I don't know how far away it is. But I can tell you what, nobody knows how far away it is because it's saturated with particles and the light coming at us is not coming at one consistent speed. This is going to be slower light coming at us than over here. There's less stuff for it to come through. I can see there's stuff that's got to come through. And when it does, it gets light. It gets lighter up there because it's impacting with all these particles. Now, let's, John Glenn can explain this very, very simply. Very, very easy to understand. And they know the universe now is completely saturated with these quantum foams.